Hi people, this is Getting Serious. I'm up to my third evolution of my indoor RC plane based on the Canberra Bomber. This is my old Mark II version, which is made from foam. And here is my Mark III version, which consists of a 3D printed fuselage and slightly larger wing area and tail. Let's see how the design, construction and test flights went for my Mark III Canberra. Here are the dimensions. I increased the wing area, extended the fuselage length and tail size a little to reduce wing loading and increase stability. I used the same design of EDF jet housing with built-in wing slots which gave the wings a bit of dihedral when in flight and resilience during crash. I built the fuselage in four sections, starting with the nose cone which had half the battery hatch, then the forward section with the other half of the battery and nose wheel support, then the midsection with radio gear hatch and wing supports, and finally the tail section. The combined weight of all these sections came to 22 grams. Not bad. I used the same 3D printed undercarriage as the Mark II, but with a larger wing, these would be spread further apart to assist taxiing. I built a new nose wheel support, which would be glued to the forward section. I then tried to print the enlarged EDF housings with lightweight PLA, but was not able to replicate the perfect print I got on my first attempt with it. After lots of calibrations etc, I was able to print the longer EDF housings, not perfect but good enough for this prototype, they weighed in at 10 grams each. I glued all four sections together using CA and aligned the sections using small slots with a 1.1.5mm carbon fibre spacer glued in place. I made the new tail plane and tail fin sections from 3mm printing foam, giving the tail plane the scale dihedral this time. Note, as a result, I had to have two push rods, one for each side. I joined these up with a Y connect to the tail plane servo. I installed the servos, push rods, and receiver in the fuselage midsection, attaching them to the foam wing. And this is how it looked. A bit like a drone with no calipi. Oh well, next version. I printed out the wheels and undercarriage mounts, and I whipped up a quick nose wheel mount before breakfast on the day of the test flights. The weight without battery ended up at 104 grams. The Mark II was 91 grams, so it was 13 grams heavier, but a fair bit more wing area. Hopefully this will be enough to improve stability. I'm at Mullamullam Stadium in Donvale to see if my new Canberra Mark III bomber will actually fly. And here are my planes, all stacked up, ready to have a go. First up, bit of a taxi test. Let's get out of everyone's way and give it a go. Oh, I'm in the air. Oh, down again. Does that count? Oh, taxis nicely. This time I give it a bit more welly, but unfortunately I've got too much up trim and it has a bit of a hard landing and disconnects the nose. Friend Greg persuaded me to have another go and gave me some masking tape to reconnect the nose. Many thanks for this, and I then had some great flight time with it. He even captured this on his phone for me. The tape held up surprisingly well, and I didn't have any more structural failures that day. I was then able to get a bit of an idea how stable it was in the air, and how slowly it flew. I've turned on the gyro stabiliser here, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. So I've turned the gyro off. My friends in the club here are helping me analyse the flying behaviour. Okay, so if you take the throttle off, does that get light? How was it light? I'll get high. Whoa! I don't want to hit Colin. Yeah, it glides. Okay, cool. So that really means you remove the thrust angle out of the equation. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on the train to Waverley for a second round of test flights. I've attached a slightly stronger nose and front section and I'm ready to do some more testing. Slightly scary with that bar in the middle of the stadium, but this time I was actually able to take off the ground and stay in the air. Once I had it settled down, it seemed to be quite stable. I 
I had a good five minute flight in the end. Later on, I had a bit of an incident. While trying to land, oh, I took out gosh. Tuan's helicopter. Yeah, I Fortunately, can see it. no damage. Unless you're trying to land. Whoa! Oh, Sorry! 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 Hold it, hold it. Later on, I had a bit of a hard landing, which highlighted some structural weaknesses in the fuselage. Oh dear. So I have since rebuilt the fuselage using 0.5mm thickness and PLA+. Plus. The total fuselage weight came to 28 grams, and this is how the Mark 3B came out looking. And I'm still learning how to do canopies in FreeCAD, so I stuck this foam canopy on. What a difference a canopy makes. And I'm back at Malamalam to give my Canberra 3B of maiden flights. Majestic. Yay, it flies. Definitely a flyer. Yeah, just need to get the trim right. Not flying to Michael. Giving it a bit of down trim. And a bit more down. I had a good 7 minute flight with my new Turnigy 650 mAh 1S battery and still quite a bit of juice left. One more flight test on my other 650 mAh battery. See if it glides. Sort of. Whoops, it's after half time and we've changed direction. It's surprising how hard it is to orient your brain to fly around the other direction. I can do this. Trying the stabilisation one. See if it helps with the air conditioning downdrafts. Not sure if the stabilisation helped with the downdrafts from the aircon, but it certainly didn't do any harm. Check out that wing flex. I had about an eight and a half minute flight this time and there was about 25% juice left in the battery. Canberra Mark 3B testing successful. It was a lovely calm fine morning so I decided to take the Canberra to the park and do some outdoor tests which were not possible indoors. Get the trim right. Full down trim. Flying about half rough at the moment. It's very calm. Although there will be currents out here that you don't get inside. We'll put the stabilizer on to see if that helps with wind mitigation. So it's a bit of breeze now. One thing I'd like to test is if it uh, glides, so we need to give it a height for that. Climbing. Okay, we'll cut the throttle. See how it glides. Not the best. Glides. Does glide. 
not super fantastic glide, but it does glide. Voltage, right, three point one volts again near the three volts. Yeah, this, this is the phenomenon I was talking about. When the battery gets low, you get full right of rudder and full down elevator, which uh, it's not great for keeping it in the air. Sitting on a park bench by the Yarra River. On my way back from Corbin Oval. This is a great little spot to come and sit and just contemplate. Uh, you'd miss it if you drove to Corbin Oval, but if you either jog or cycle t to this area, uh, you pass all these lovely parks and uh, get to see this really nice scenery. So what do I think of the success of the Mark III Canberra Bomber so far? It's, um, it flies really well outside. I had a beautiful calm morning this morning and I was able to get some height, do some further glide tests and some stress tests on the wings because as you might have noticed the wings do flex quite a lot with those flexible EDF mounts. I was able to get some altitude and do some gliding. It doesn't glide the best but it does glide. I think because there's quite a bit of drag from the EDFs when they're uh, turned off. Uh, the rest of the plane is pretty clean now with the 3D printed fuselage. Uh, on one of my landings outside, the front wheel ripped out of the fuselage, so I don't think it's a problem indoors, but it um, probably needs a little bit of strengthening there, my next version. Uh, probably I can make the first two nose sections in one piece now, so there's only three parts of the fuselage uh, using the revolve tool and I'll strengthen that nose wheel and I'll also build in some sort of shock absorbing or springy front nose. Uh, so yeah, the, I'm really pleased with the docile nature of the Mark III A and B. Uh, the B fuselage held out a lot better using 0.5mm uh, PLA plus so I'm really pleased with that uh, and I look forward to building the uh, Mark IV which will be even more to scale and more like the actual camera bomber. So as usual if you'd like to follow me in my progress with my projects uh, please consider subscribing to Dave's Fana Hussey and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.